Creative Katie, Karen Birchall here. Welcome to my channel. And today we are doing a napkin journal tutorial. And here is a sneak peek of this lovely festive art journal page. I've used a napkin provided to me from Ninny's Napkins. Check out the description box for a discount code. So this is a cute little bunny in amongst these Gerber daisies. I believe it's Gerber Bunny. I'm not sure what the name is, but you can check out it on Ninny's site. So I'm just using a liner brush with water and I'm cutting, water cutting, I don't know what the term is, to the part of the pattern that I want. Now I'm going to admit, I love the bright colors of this napkin, the Gerber daisies, and really planned on using this napkin in a completely different way and not using the bunny. But I thought with Easter right around the corner, we would do, um, you know, take advantage of that theme. But definitely this napkin has uses beyond Easter and you can just use the Gerber daisies and I'm sure over time uh, you'll see me using this napkin again. So I'm cutting out the pieces that I think I might want for my pattern. Now I've taped off my art journal page and this is a 7x10 Canson mixed media and I'm using this stencil they call it's called Bubble Rebound and it's from the crafters workshop there is a discount code in the description box for this as well so i am using gold paint on here and i thought these circles were really cute they kind of reminded me of eggs i'm going with the bunny and it had kind of those same colors now the gold is often very trans lucent so I'm giving it a second coat to build up the color and depth a little bit now I did not gesso this page which means wherever it's white it is raw page and it will take paint differently put the step pattern back and I am stamping some script stamp on some of those bubbles to give a little bit more pattern and interest to the background, although most of my time is going to be spent using the napkin. Now the napkin, I have the, the one part and then I've taken other parts and to spread it across to fit the page. And that's one of the things you can do with the napkin because you typically have four quadrants of pattern. Now I did not put white paint underneath where I put the bunny which means you're going to see whatever's behind it and if whatever's behind it's darker it's going to make your pattern look darker so I wanted the bunny to really show up and keep those colors bright I could have should have done a coat of white but I'm happy with how it is. And what I'm using the napkin here for is I'm going to use it as the guide to paint because I am going to basically paint over pretty much all parts of this napkin by the time we're done. Now there I'm showing you that I did not gesso that um, the white part. And before I do anything other painting, I am giving this a coat of clear gesso. And that's just going to allow whatever color medium I'm going to be doing to not soak into the paper. Basically, it turns the page non-porous. And that's a good use of clear gesso. So I wanted to bring some of that pink color up into the rest of this page. So I am using the floating acrylic technique with my angle brush. You've seen me do this dozens of times. I do have a video that where I'm specifically teaching this and I set you up to basically, you know, give you homework so you have practice of using this skill. So I'll link that video. But you can always do a search on my channel. Just type in floating acrylic and you will find it. So I'm liking the look of, you know, bringing that pink up 
into the background. And I'm thinking this must be later in the day, afternoon or if it's a particularly cloudy day, I have the lights on and that gets shadows on my workspace. And when I do the floating acrylic technique, I'm turning the page to make it easier for, for me. And I just am adding color. I think this would have, as it turned out, I think if I had done a blue background, this would have looked really well too. But I'm very happy with how it ended up. Although it, it did give me some problems to solve along the way. But that's what it's all about when you're art journaling. You just kind of go with the flow and solve the problems as they come to you. And quite often that's how I learn things that then I can do on purpose. I'm really liking the look of this. So now I'm look, picking the colors that I see in those Gerber daisies, and I am going to paint over them. Now I'm using some gesso. Here I have gesso and a, the liner brush, and I'm just very loosely, I'm just slapping it on using the napkin pattern for the flowers very loosely. I'm not trying to stay in the lines. I'm matching the colors and getting this really painterly effect on the flowers and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving the look. But I must say adding the gesso with the paint or mixing the colors right on the brush really is key to achieving this look. You can let it dry, come back, add more layers, add more color. And you can see, because my paint is kind of medium bodied, it even adds texture to, to this. I am not being very precise. Sometimes it works better than other times. If it doesn't work, I let it dry, come back, and I'm applying another layer. As you can see, this one got a little bit bigger than what was there originally. This is something rather new for me, and I'm learning as I go. And I hope you really give this a try, because it's a wonderful technique. So you can see, you know, compared to where on the far left side, the napkin is just by itself, and you can see the difference. I'm also brightening the colors here. So this is something, if you put the napkin down and it was on a darker background, you can then paint over it. With the addition of the gesso, it then can make the colors brighter. And if your background got a little too dark. I'm just adding the grass in between where I had napkin and where I didn't. And I'm mixing. I've got a couple shades of green there, white and, and yellow. So please check out, I have playlists where I organize my videos. And if you go, when you go to the front page of my channel, 
you can click on the tab that says playlist and you will find a playlist called journal nap napkin journal and all the videos where i've used napkins can be found in there and with each one i'm trying you know to give a little bit of a different technique use the napkin in somewhat of a different way and give you ideas of a variety of ways that you can use that very valuable resource or use that resource as a jump start. Now my bunny here, I decided it, it just, I didn't think that I could see it enough. So I'm going with a slightly darker color. I think it got quite dark and, and I think my bunny turned out looking more like a guinea pig from my childhood. I think he's still cute, but. I definitely am a better painter of flowers than of rabbits. But it's a fun page and that's what it's all about. Enjoying your time, creating, playing with colors, learning something along the way. Now I'm using, I'm shading, I'm adding a little bit of darkness on here with kind of the float acrylic technique, kind of a lazy person, lazy man's way of doing it actually. But I'm just adding a little bit of shading and, and on the flowers. Just to add depth. Now at this point, the flowers, the paint that's on the flowers is dry. You want to make sure that you give it time to dry. And because I've been, I did put it on fairly thick, that does take a little bit of time. So give it that time. And then come in and shade or, and or highlight. Donning the eyes with the stylus of the of the rabbit just to make it pop. And then I'm using that stylus for the center of the flowers. So it looks like the seed heads. If you don't have a stylus, you can use the tip of a toothpick or you can use the other side of a paintbrush. These flowers, with the paint on them, they have a lot of um, extra texture. I was going to put an Easter message, and then I thought, you know what? I'm going to put some bunny loves you. So it's not necessarily solely Easter. It's a very cute page. This would be a nice canvas to do, a little canvas to, to do to put in a, a child's room. So I'd like everybody to do me a favor, please, if you are on Instagram, please go over there and follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Giving it some splatters with pink and black, I believe. And here are some close ups of the finished project. I hope you love it as much as I do. And remember, somebody loves you.